Welcome to part two of this Train Driver Rules video, featuring yet more information about the GSMR radio and what actually happens when you press that big red button. Hello and welcome. For those of you who are new to my channel, my name's Richard and I'm a freight train driver and former passenger train driver based in the southeast of England. As always, it's the mandatory declaration, guys. All the views and opinions expressed within this video are solely my own, may not affect those of any companies I may be employed by or associated with. Furthermore, these train driver rules videos are intended for educational and entertainment purposes. I do try to make them as accurate as I possibly can. However, if you're a trainee driver or you're a qualified driver doing revision, please double check the rule book and check your company's local operating instructions as things do change over time. Also, if you do enjoy this video, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing. It takes you two seconds to do and it really makes a huge difference to me. I'd recommend, if you haven't already, that you go back and watch part one of this video. A lot of what I'm gonna say isn't gonna make sense unless you've watched part one and I'll leave a link in the description below to that. If you have watched part one, then you'll know that one of the way we can contact the signaler is by using the big red panic button, the emergency call button in the cab. So, let's start the video with that. Railway emergency group call. Pressing the big red button or the emergency call button will send an emergency alarm to the signal box and all trains within your cell, the cell in front of you and the cell behind you. Now it's important to note that emergency calls are not signal box specific, so they won't just send calls, they won't just send an emergency alarm to trains that are being controlled by your signal box. They'll send an emergency alarm to all trains within those cells. Um, if you think back to part one, where I spoke about how you can have multiple lines controlled by different signalers running through the same cell, that's the sort of thing I'm talking about. If you've got no idea what I'm talking about, go back to part one and rewatch that. So on hearing this unmistakable alarm, you should stop your train immediately. And once your train has come to a stand, you press your ST button on the radio, which will send an acknowledgement to the signaler that your train has stopped. I said the alarm was unmistakable. This is what it sounds like. Emergency, emergency, emergency. Like I said, you're not gonna mistake that in a hurry. Once an emergency call has been initiated, the GSMR becomes an open network. Usually communication between drivers and signalers is secure and two-way. So the only people that can hear that call are the driver, the signaler and the recordings because, as I'm sure you know, all calls will be recorded for training and monitoring purposes. However, when an emergency call is made, the network becomes open and every train that has received that emergency call and every signal box that has received that emergency call can hear exactly what's being said by all parties. This type of call is known as an, a railway emergency group call, railway emergency group call or REC call for short. Normally the radio in the cab works just like a mobile phone, so you pick up your handset and you talk, hello, this is the driver of so and so, etc, etc. However, when a railway emergency group call is in operation, the system works like a conventional radio, like a walkie talkie, and the handset in the cab is fitted with a push to talk button. So much like when you use a walkie talkie or two way radio, you have to push and hold the button to speak, when there's a railway emergency group call in process, it's exactly the same. You pick up your handset, you press your push to talk button. When you press your push to talk button, you get like a du du du, like an alarm. Once that alarm's finished, you identify who you are, state your message, and when you finish saying your message, you say over. It's important to say who you are, because like I said, the, the network becomes an open network. You could have 20 or 30 trains. So the first thing you must do is state who you are. And when you finish your message, you must stay over so everybody else knows that you've finished speaking. However, if you have been stopped by emergency call, you need to avoid the temptation to pick up the radio and speak. The most important thing is that you sit there and listen. The only time you should speak is if you have information, safety related information pertaining to the incident. Any other time, you don't speak, you just listen. When the emergency has been dealt with or made safe by blocking the line to trains and setting signals to danger, the signaller may ask certain trains to remain at a stand and then use the phrase, end of railway emergency group call, before ending the call. This is very important, end of railway emergency group call. When you hear that phrase, providing you're not directly involved in the emergency or you've not been identified as a train to remain at a stand, you can carry on with your journey obeying all other signals. It's important to remember, proceed with caution, expect the next signal to be, re uh, to be read. 
It could have been that your previous signal was green, but because there's now been an emergency call, the situation has changed, your next signal may be red. So if you hear end of railway emergency group call, you've not been asked to remain at a stand, your train's not involved in the incident, proceed with caution up to the next signal, then obey all other signals. Should the emergency call end without the signaler saying end of railway emergency group call, then you need to remain at a stand. Sometimes the signaler may end a railway emergency group call without saying that phrase because they want to speak to the driver involved in the incident directly. Sometimes if the incident is of a, um, a sensitive nature, such as a one under, it can be very distressing for the driver talking directly to the signaler without all their colleagues listening into that call. So the signaler will end the group call without saying the phrase and then speak directly to the to the driver involved. If the emergency call gets ended without the phrase end of railway emergency group call, remain at a stand, do not move. Do not be tempted to contact the signaller either. The signaller will contact you when they're good and ready. They're probably dealing with 20 or 30 other trains. They're attempting to deal with uh, the emergency situation that's gone on. The last thing they want is every single driver phoning them up saying, can I go now? Can I go? Is it safe to go? Even if it takes 20 minutes, half an hour, just remain at a stand, do not move until the signaler contacts you. Do not be tempted to contact the signaler, wait until they contact you. Sooner or later, they will. So let's have a quick look at how this would actually work in practice. For simplicity, we're gonna use train one, two, and three, but in the real world, these would be represented with head codes. Train one, traveling along, spots a tree on the line. Immediately, the driver applies the emergency brakes and presses the big red button on the radio. Fortunately, in this case, the train manages to stop before hitting the tree. Train two that is traveling on the same line and train three that is traveling on the line that passes overhead but still within the same cell also receive the emergency stop message. Train one, using the press to talk on the handset, doo -doo -doo, says, this is an emergency call. Am I speaking to the signaler over? You need to state the urgency of the situation by saying this is an emergency call and you need to confirm you're speaking to the right person. It's no good relaying a load of information just to find out that the box cleaner or the tea person has picked up the phone. So this is an emergency call, am I speaking to the signaller? Over. Signaller will then reply, this is the signaller of XXX, state your message. Over. Train 1 picks up the receiver, press to talk, duh, duh, duh. This is the driver of train 1 on the up main under cross bridge. There is a large tree blocking the up line and possibly the down line. I need both the up and down lines blocked to all traffic. Over. Signaller will then repeat that back to you. This is the Area 1 signaller. I can confirm that I have blocked the up and down line in the area of cross bridge. Can you confirm if the tree is blocking the down line? Over. Driver on train 1. Duh, duh, duh. Driver train 1 on the up at cross bridge. I am unable to confirm from where I am stood. Over. However, train 2 can see what's going on. Train two, press to talk, duh, duh, duh. This is the driver of train two on the down line. I can confirm the tree is blocking the down line, over. So now the signaler will deal with the incident and make that safe by replacing signals to danger and putting blocks on the necessary line, getting the power off, calling the emergency services or whatever needs to be done. The next thing that's gonna happen is area one control signaler is gonna get back on the radio. Duh, duh, duh. <laughs> area one control signaler, both up and down lines are now blocked to traffic. Train one and train two to remain at a stand. End of railway emergency group call. On hearing that all important phrase, end of railway emergency group call, train three, who is not involved in the incident and has not been asked to remain at a stand, can continue with their journey. Like I said before, remembering your next signal may have been reverted to danger, so do proceed with caution. The signaller will, will then make arrangements directly with the other two trains as to what's gonna happen next. Now in our example here, we've only used three trains, so it's quite simple. But a railway emergency group call can involve many trains in many areas. For example, a railway emergency group call made at London Charing Cross would shut down London Charing Cross, London Waterloo, London Brackfriars, London Bridge. It's quite a large area. So that end of railway emergency group call is really, really critical. It would take ages for a signaller to contact all those trains to give them authority to move again. So that's why we have the end of railway emergency group call procedure. If you're driving your train along, happy as Larry, and you drive into a cell where there's currently a live emergency call, you will receive the emergency call as you enter that cell. So you'd receive the call, stop your train, and then follow the instructions as usual. So basically, just listen. I've personally been on the receiving end of a couple of um, railway emergency group calls. The most recent one was at a place called Pets Wood, and I was actually train free in our example here. So I was traveling along, received the emergency call, 
whack the emergency stop plunger and stop my train. The incident was on a line that passes underneath my line. It wasn't on my line at all. Um, unfortunately, it had been a, um, a fatality at a place called Bickley. So in that incident, the signaller ended the call without saying end of row emergency group call so they could speak to the driver directly. I remained at a stand, must have been for about 20 minutes. Then the signaller called me and authorised me to proceed with my journey. I've made... I've made a couple of red button calls as well. It's certainly not an everyday occurrence, but I'm sure um, every driver at some point in their career will have to press that button. For me personally, it's been um, fallen trees, nothing too exciting or, or too dramatic, um, just fallen trees blocking the line. So quick recap on emergency calls. If you receive an emergency call, stop your train, press the ST button and then listen. Do not pick up the receiver and speak unless you have safety information pertaining to the incident. If you do need to speak, remember to use the push to talk button on the handset. Remember to state who you are before you speak and when you finish speaking, remember to say over. Do not move your train until you hear the phrase of end of railway emergency group call. Then only move your train if you have not been identified if you've not been asked to remain at a stand by the signaller. If the call ends without hearing end of railway emergency group call, remain at a stand and wait for the signaller to contact you. Remember when you start moving again that your next signal may have changed, so expect your next signal to be a red. General broadcast. Safety broadcasts and general broadcasts. Let's start with general broadcast. So signalers can pre-record messages in the signal box and have those messages played to all trains within a certain area or individual trains as they reach certain trigger points. This is a really useful system. It's normally used to convey general information, hence the name general broadcast. So for example, this is the signaler at Newcastle signal box. All trains in the Newcastle area be advised that due to a points failure, we are experiencing delays. It's a really good way of getting information out to drivers, especially on driver only trains. You can then relay that information back to your passengers. It's of course only ever used for operational purposes. I have received a couple of uh, questionable calls on the GSMR radio. Um, I won't mention what signal box they are, but I did receive one saying uh, this is the signal at XXX box, wishing all staff a happy new year. I did receive one as well from another signal box saying this is a general broadcast, this is a message from the signaler at XXX box, I'm mentioning no names. I'm pleased to tell you England have just got through to the World Cup final. And we all know how that finished up. Safety broadcast. Safety broadcast messages are a relatively new thing. They've probably only been around, I'd say, for maybe five or six years at the time of making this video. I think they're a really good concept and they're actually completely underused. So let's take an example. A driver's reported that there's low railhead conditions, so slippery railheads at, um, let's pick a station, Battle. There's low, poor railhead conditions at Battle. They've reported that to the signal the railhead conditions are reportable. The signaler needs to advise the train behind that there are poor railhead conditions. The signaller does this by placing the signal before the station back to danger, requiring the train to stop. Once the train is at a stand, the signaller will then contact the driver and relay the information to them. On reaching a clear understanding, the signaller will then clear the signal and the train will proceed along its way. Now, th there's an obvious problem here. You're stopping a train at a red signal to advise the driver that the line is slippery. There's a bit of risk being introduced here, quite, quite a high level of risk. We don't really want to be stopping trains if we don't have to. That's where the new safety broadcast system comes into it. Signalers can pre-record a message to be played to a train once it reaches a certain point. So if we take our example there where the signaler had to stop a train at a red signal in order to tell the driver. Obviously before you get to a red signal you'll have two yellows and one yellow. Um, so you get two yellow signals, one yellow and then the red. So the signal would set a pre-recorded message to broadcast when the train goes past the, the double yellow signal. So the train goes past the double yellow signal, the driver will get a pre-recorded message in the cab saying, this is the signaler at XXX location, please be advised that there are slippery railheads, or poor railhead conditions in the battle area. Please acknowledge receipt of this message by pressing the ST button. What you do then as the driver, if you have understood the message, you press the ST button on your radio and that will send a message back to the signal box saying that you have received and understood the message. Once the signal has received your confirmation, that red signal that they were going to stop you at, they can clear that. You don't need to stop. 
if the signaler doesn't receive confirmation that you've received the message or you haven't understood the message properly and you haven't pressed the ST button, then the signaler doesn't clear that signal and you stop at it as per the existing system. So it's completely and utterly fail safe. So the idea is the signaler can give you safety information, you can press ST to say you've acknowledged it, trains keep moving, you don't need to stop trains unnecessarily. As per our previous example, the signaler has put the signal to danger before battle in order to stop the train to relay safety critical information. However, as our train approaches, a safety broadcast happens in the cab. This is a safety broadcast. Low adhesion has been reported at battle station. Press the ST button if you have understood this message. The driver presses the ST button, the signaler clears the signals, and our train arrives at battle. Safety broadcasts are not just used for low adhesion, they can be used for missing speedboards, signals obscured by foliage, and many other reasons. Multi party calls. For a little radio unit in the cab, this, the GSMR sure is a powerful bit of kit. And there are a couple um, more things that I want to cover, but I'll try and keep it brief. I tried to pass on as much information as I possibly can in these videos, but obviously I don't want to get too technical, partly because I don't know all the technical details um, and partly for security reasons. My general rule of thumb is if the information's already out there in the public domain somewhere, it will go in a video. If I can't find it in the public domain, it doesn't go in a video. So quickly and not being overly technical on this one because I can't remember how it works. <laughs> the GSMR radio allows for multi-party calling. So let's take an incident here. We're driving a freight train, we're going along happily and our locomotive fails and we break down. So we arrange for an assisting locomotive to be coupled up to the back of our train. Now there's a whole other video about rules and procedures there about how to assist a failed train and assistance protection and everything else and hopefully in, in time <laughs> I will get around to making that video. Now, let's assume that the locomotive is connected onto the back of our train, but the driver of the rear locomotive and the driver of the front locomotive need to communicate. Now, most freight train drivers do carry two-way radios, so that wouldn't necessarily be a problem, but let's take on this example, you haven't got two-way radios. You're not supposed to use mobile phones in the cab, so what alternative have we got? Yep, you guessed it, GSMR radio. The GSMR radio will allow the lead driver of the train and the assisting driver to communicate with one another. I can't quite remember how it's done because I haven't ever done it. <laughs> I was taught how to do it, but it's one of those things, use it or lose it. Driver safety device. The last part of the GSMR system, which is quite an important part that I want to cover, is the DSD, that's driver safety device, more commonly known as the dead man's handle. On most trains, it's not actually a handle, it's a pedal these days. Now, if as the driver you're unfortunate enough to become incapacitated whilst driving a train, the driver safety device will fire off, you obviously won't acknowledge it, um, and the emergency brakes on the locomotive or train will apply stopping the train. However, if you're stopped in the middle of nowhere, nobody knows you're there, nobody knows you've stopped, nobody knows the reasons why. That's where the GSMR radio comes in. And this isn't exclusive to the GSMR, the old CSR network, the analog system, also used to support this. So once the driver safety device has been activated, after a certain amount of time, the radio will start screaming at you and it's like, it's, it's a really horrible like da 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 uh, And it will say on the radio, DSD alarm. Now at this point, you can cancel that by pressing the X button. But if you don't cancel it because you're incapacitated, an alert will then be sent to the signal box, alerting the signaller that you've had a DSD activation. That's gonna make the signaller think, what's going on here, is the driver okay? The signaller then has a couple of options. They can attempt to communicate with the driver using the GSMR radio. The uh, cabs actually have loudspeakers fitted to them so the, the voice would come through the loudspeaker. Uh, the signaller can arrange for another train to be stopped on an adjacent line to check that the driver's okay. But the signaller also has the ability to make a PA announcement on the train. That's right, the GSMR system is also linked into the PA system on the train. So if a DSD alarm is activated, the signaller can make a PA announcement asking if there's any staff member on the train or any medical personnel on the train that can go and assist the driver. It's really good to know that as the driver, if you do become, if you are unfortunate enough to become incapacitated while driving, there are some sort of safety mechanisms in place to get help to you. So there we go, guys. That is a basic yet fully comprehensive <laughs> beginner's guide to the GSMR radio. What did you think of the video? Do you want more train driver rules videos? I mean, I plan on making them anyway, but it's always good to get some love in the comment section. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. That would be absolutely brilliant. It takes you just seconds and it means so much to me. A big thank you to all my Patreon supporters. As Jago Hazard would say, the legend that is Jago Hazard, you are the ST button to my 
safety broadcast message. <laughs> Don't forget to join the Discord and also check out my social media channels. Until the next video, buy my merch and goodbye for now. Hey.